place, London. The time, 1843. The season, that of jollity, of festivity and charity, holly and berries and goodwill to all men, with perhaps one exception. And it is with this exception that we are concerned in our story. The exception is Ebenezer Scrooge. Christmas, Uncle. God save you. Humbug. Christmas or humbug, Uncle? <laughs> you don't mean that, I'm sure. Oh, but I do. Merry Christmas? What reason have you to be merry? You're, you're poor enough. Well, come then. What reason have you to be morose? You're rich enough. Bah! Humbug. Don't be cross, Uncle. Well, 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 what else can I be? Out upon a merry Christmas. If I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding and, and, and buried with, with a stake of holly through his heart. Uncle! Keep Christmas in your own way and let me keep it in mine. Don't be angry, Uncle. Come, dine with us tomorrow. Never. No, good afternoon. I'm sorry with all my heart to find you so resolute. But I'll keep my Christmas humor to the last. So, a Merry Christmas, Uncle, and a Happy New Year. Good afternoon. And a Merry Christmas, Mr. Cratchit. Merry Christmas, sir. Good afternoon! Scrooge and Marley's, I believe. Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley has died uh, seven years ago this very night. At this festive season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, a few of us are endeavouring to raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of warmth. But are there no prisons? Plenty of prisons. Uh, and then the treadmill and the poor law, the union workhouses, they in full vigour, then, hmm? Both very busy. Oh, I was afraid from what you said at first that something had occurred to stop them in their useful course. I, I don't make merry myself at Christmas and I can't afford to make idle people merry. Yes, I know. You'll tell me that many can't go there, and many would rather die. Well, we'd better do that than decrease the surplus population. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Uh, you'll want all day tomorrow, I suppose. Hmm? If quite convenient, sir. It's not convenient, and it's not fair. If I was to stop you half a crown for it, you'd think yourself ill-used, I'll be bound. Hmm? <laughs> and yet you, you don't think me ill-used when I pay a day's wages for no work. It's only once a year, sir. Well, that's a poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. You'll be here all the earlier the next morning. Even the blind man's dog knew old Scrooge and avoided him. Scrooge kept all humanity at a distance and liked it that way. <gasps> Jacob. Jacob Marley. want with me. March. You don't believe in me. <laughs> I don't. Because you, 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 you may be an undigested bit of beef, a fragment of an underdone potato. 
<laughs> There's more of gravy than of grave about you. I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it link by link and yard by yard. I girded it on of my own free will. And of my own free will, I wore it. Now, now, you were always a good man of business, Jacob. Business! Mankind was my business. Why did I walk through crowds of fellow beings with my eyes turned down? and never raise them to that blessed star which led the wise men to a poor abode. Hear me. I, I, I will, I will. I am here tonight to warn you that you have yet a chance of escaping my fate. Ebenezer, <laughs> you will be haunted by three spirits. Expect the first tomorrow, when the bell tolls one. Expect the second on the next night at the same hour. The third upon the next night, when the last stroke of twelve has ceased to vibrate. The air was filled with moaning phantoms. Their misery was plainly that they had lost the power to interfere for good in human matters.